Water scarcity has not only been one of the most challenging problems of the past, but even in 2024, this issue has been haunting many countries over the world. Due to the effects of increased population and climate change, many nations are on their way to getting the most secured and reliable form of water supply, which can be a huge challenge in general. Amongst the struggling nations, Israel also faced a huge water challenge, but it not only fixed the issue, but introduced an innovative water highway that the world is stunned by thanks to their efforts, technological advances, and sheer willpower to build such a complex project. You see, Israel is a desert, and in the past, the country has faced a huge shortage of water since its emergence on the world map in 1948. However, thanks to the National Water Carrier of Israel, the country produces a whopping 20% more water than it once used to, and more than what it needs. The country has not only solved its water crisis with flying colors, but it is also exporting water technologies to other nations globally. But building a mega project like this wasn't easy, and today we are covering the National Water Carrier of Israel, how it was built, what was the need, and what are some of the challenges the nation faced in order to construct it. Subscribe to our channel for more mega projects related videos and let's get started. The National Water Carrier of Israel is an amazing water conveyance system that stretches across the length of the country, playing one of the most important roles in its water management and agricultural success. This mega project was a direct response to the country's water scarcity issue, and the project channels freshwater from the Sea of Galilee, also known as Lake Kinneret, in the north to the dry, arid regions in the south. The carrier is a vital part of Israel's water infrastructure, not only supporting its agricultural sector, but also addressing the drinking water needs of a rapidly growing population. This massive system has not only helped the country produce more water, but it also solved the issue of scarcity. To make it interesting, Israel now produces a whopping 20% surplus when it comes to its total water use, and this mega project has only improved the country's reputation over the world due to the excellent water transfer highway that they have constructed. For reference, this innovative resource management has become important in bringing water into the areas of Israel that suffer from less water, making those areas thrive and water common as well. However, before we get deep into its construction, a very important question occurs. Why and when was the project actually started? The origins of the National Water Carrier date back to the early days of the State of Israel. After its establishment in 1948, Israel's government recognized that the country's lack of sufficient and evenly distributed water resources was one of its greatest challenges. A growing population, coupled with a semi-arid climate, made effective water management crucial. The idea for a national water system emerged from earlier regional projects, such as the Rutenberg Project, which incorporated water resources from the Jordan River to produce electricity in the 1930s. As the vision for a water carrier solidified in the 1950s, the project became a top priority. The government, with the support of experts and foreign aid, developed a plan to create a network that could efficiently distribute water from the wetter northern regions to the drier, less fertile south. In 1956, the government officially approved the National Water Carrier Project. Shortly thereafter, the construction of this massive undertaking began. Given the complex nature of the region's geography and the political tensions surrounding water rights, Israel had to carefully navigate both engineering and diplomatic challenges. Nevertheless, by 1964, the project was completed and fully operational, and today, it stands as one of the most innovative mega-projects known to humanity. But what about the design and construction of a mega-project like this? It wasn't definitely child's play. Rather, it took years of hard work, challenges, resilience, and trial and error 
to make the National Water Carrier of Israel happen. The National Water Carrier of Israel is one of the most complex and impressive feats of engineering in the Middle East. The project spans approximately 130 kilometers, or 81 miles, with water flowing from the Sea of Galilee in the north, across the Jezreel Valley, through the coastal plain, and eventually to the Negev Desert in the south. The system is a combination of open canals, pipes, tunnels, reservoirs, and pumping stations. One of the carrier's notable features is its elevation management. Since the Sea of Galilee now sits at a lower elevation compared to other regions in Israel, a series of pumping stations were strategically placed along the route to push water uphill, overcoming significant altitude differences. Additionally, the project uses gravity to its advantage whenever possible, minimizing energy consumption. The construction required over a million tons of concrete and vast amounts of steel, as well as a skilled workforce of engineers and laborers. It was a national effort, with multiple organizations and international consultants coming together to design and build a reliable water infrastructure. The result is a sophisticated system that can deliver approximately 1.7 billion cubic meters of water annually, securing a sustainable water supply for generations. So, when you look deeply into the mega project, you can almost tell how impressive it not only sounds, but actually is. You see, this mega project has solved issues of generation, and even during the climate change the world is going through, the country doesn't have to go through droughts or issues like that. Rather, the project has been helping the citizens of those remote areas getting fresh water while also improving the country's overall agricultural industry. The National Water Carrier's main purpose is to ensure an ample amount of distribution of water across Israel, providing a stable supply for both urban and agricultural areas. Although Israel is a small country, its climate varies significantly from north to south, leading to uneven water distribution. The carrier enables water to be moved from regions with surplus water, such as the Sea of Galilee, to more arid regions with higher demand. Agriculture is the primary consumer of water transported by the carrier, accounting for roughly 40% of the total usage. The water supports the cultivation of various crops in the Negev Desert and other arid areas, allowing Israel to become a global leader in agricultural innovation. In addition to agriculture, the carrier supplies water to municipalities and industries, ensuring that urban centers have access to clean water. The project has played a critical role in allowing Israel to meet its water needs even in times of drought. So, what are the technological aspects that the project uses which makes it so innovative in the first place? You see, the Israel's national water carrier is not a static system. Over the years, it has incorporated advanced technologies to improve efficiency and reduce environmental impact. Israel has invested heavily in digital monitoring systems that track water flow, quality, and pressure throughout the carrier. Real-time data collection enables operators to detect leaks, maintain optimal water quality, and ensure efficient resource allocation. One of the most remarkable technological additions is the use of desalinated water. In recent years, Israel has become a global leader in desalinization technology, producing a significant portion of its drinking water from the Mediterranean Sea. This desalinated water is now integrated into the national water carrier system, supplementing the natural sources and reducing the demand on the Sea of Galilee and groundwater reserves. Advances in agricultural technology have also complemented the carrier's effectiveness. Drip irrigation, a technique pioneered in Israel, has drastically reduced the amount of water needed for crops, making the distribution network more sustainable. But the main purpose of this mega project still hasn't changed. While the project cost around 420 million Israeli lira back in 1964, if we apply the inflation fixed formulas, the project could be as far as 2.85 billion US dollars today. The Sea of Galilee has traditionally served as the main source of water 
for the national water carrier. However, the increased demand on this lake has raised concerns about its ecological balance and water levels. Recognizing the importance of protecting this vital resource, Israel has undertaken efforts to reduce reliance on the Sea of Galilee and, more recently, even replenish it. One of the key strategies for refilling the Sea of Galilee involves redirecting desalinated water into the lake during periods of low rainfall. This innovative approach, known as the reverse water carrier, uses the infrastructure of the national water carrier to transport water from desalinization plants along the Mediterranean coast back to the Sea of Galilee. By doing so, Israel aims to preserve the lake's water levels, prevent environmental degradation, and ensure its availability for future generations. So, in the end, this project has not only solved Israel's huge water problem, but also ensured that the country is set for many generations to come. What do you think about the National Water Carrier of Israel? Let us know in the comments down below.